You know about velocity and speed from your everyday life. It's how fast something moves, how far it goes over how long it takes. In physics, though, we have four technical definitions for uh, velocity and speed. So we're going to go over those four, and our example will be moving chalk. We're going to imagine the chalk starts at the origin of the x-axis and moves to 40 centimeters in one second, and then in another second moves down to 30. So it moves a little faster at the beginning, and then reverses direction and a little bit slower. And let's make a kinematics plot of that. So it would start out going from 0 to 40 in one second, and then take its time getting down to 30 in the second second. Okay, so that's our motion, and now let's start defining these quantities. First, we have the average velocity. So we use a script v, or I'm sorry, that's a cursive v, for those of you under 30. And velocities are always vectors, so we'll put a vector on it. And for average, we'll put avg for the subscript. So the average velocity is defined as the displacement over the time interval for that displacement. So we're going to call this box 1 and just calculate a few average velocities based on our motion. So let's calculate the average velocity from 0 seconds to 1 second. So I'll just put 0-1 down here to let you know that's the one we're calculating. From 0 to 1, well, displacement is just final minus initial. So the final is 40 centimeters, the initial is 0, so that's 40 minus 0. And uh, over delta t, well, that would be final minus initial. The delta t is just 1 second, 1 minus 0. So it would be 40, and it's a vector. Remember, it's i hat because it's on the x-axis. i hat centimeters per second. That's the average velocity on that interval. Let's do another one. The average velocity from the interval from 1 to 2. Well, let's see. That would be, we'll leave out the algebra this time. That would be final minus initial 30 minus uh, 40. So that's negative 10 minus 10 over the interval of 1. So minus 10 over 1 is minus 10. And we know that's the i hat direction centimeters per second. And then finally, we could do the average velocity from the entire interval, 0 to 2. Well, let's see, final minus initial, uh, 30 minus 0, that's 30. And the interval is 2, 30 over 2 is 15. Um, I had direction centimeters per second. So that's average velocity. I'm going to bias a little room on the board here and make this go right here, 40 I have centimeters per second. Okay, so the next one is the average speed. So a big difference is velocities are vectors and speeds are not vectors. So we're going to indicate speed with a cursive V and we're going to put AVG, but we're not going to put a vector symbol over it. That tells you that it's a speed and not a velocity. So the speed is the d, the distance traveled, over delta t. All right. So let's go through and think about distance now over those same intervals. This is box 2, so 2. And we want the average speed from 0 to 1. Well, from 0 to 1, it moved from 0 to 40 centimeters. So the distance it felt like it traveled was 40. So 40 over 1. That's again 40, and the unit is centimeters per second. No i hat because this is not a vector. This is uh, a regular number. And let's see, so then we're going to get the average velocity from 1 to 2. And in this case, it felt like it traveled 10, right? It went from 40 to 30. It went 10, 10 in one second. So that's 10 centimeters per second. In this case, it was negative here because this is a vector. We were indicating direction for velocity. For speed, we don't care about the direction. It's just 10. And then finally, let's look at the average speed all the way from 0 to 2. And that would be how far did it feel like it went regardless of direction. It went 40, and then it went 10 more. So it really went 50 in terms of distance, divided by the delta t is now 2. So 50 over 2 is 25 centimeters per second. 
And you'll see the velocity for the entire trip is smaller than the speed. That's because it spent some of its time going backwards. Speed doesn't care it went backwards part of the time, and velocity does. That's why it came out smaller. Okay, so now, instantaneous. Let's think about this. So we said that the average uh, speed from 0 to 1, or the average velocity was 40. And you can kind of tell, since this is a straight line, it's the same speed all the time. If we were just to do from 0 to 0.5, the way I drew it, it would be 40. And anywhere in this interval, it's going 40. So instantaneous means let's pick a certain place and say, what is the speed right there? Not over a, a thick interval, but at a certain time. That's what instantaneous means. The way you kind of think about getting it is, instead of thinking about 0 and 1, let's just shrink that interval down a little bit. Let's get a little bit closer. Maybe there and there, and then you'd come over to measure here and here. And if you did that ratio, you'd get 40. you say, hey, let's get even closer. There and there, and that would give you there and there. If you did that ratio, delta x, uh, displacement over time, you do get 40. So the idea is you shrink it down, 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 down to finally get the uh, velocity at a point. And that, in calculus, is the derivative. So what we can write then is v. It's a vector because it's velocity. For instantaneous, we just put nothing down here. We don't write INST. We just leave it off. If it's got that there, it's average with nothing. It's instantaneous. So that is just the derivative dx dt. Often it'll be written as the position vector, not a displacement vector. So the position was the vector from the origin to wherever uh, you're talking about. So if you're comfortable with calculus, you're familiar with this idea of a derivative. If you haven't had calculus and you're uncomfortable with the derivative, this is also just the slope. Okay? It's the slope of the line at that point is one way to look at it. So let's calculate a few uh, instantaneous velocities. Let's see, so this was box 3, so 3, the velocity, and I'll just put as a subscript the time I'm calculating it at, so it's 0 0.5. So the velocity basically here. Well, in this kind of a problem, to get it, you do have to think of a slope. You have to think of an interval. So the interval you would use is the one where you know the numbers, 0 to 1 and 40 to 0. So we know that the slope there is uh, 40 over 1. So it's really the same answer as here, 40 i hat centimeters per second. So average and instantaneous velocity will not always be the same. They are here just because the velocity is constant. We can real quick do, let's see, the average velocity at uh, this interval, say 1.2. Well, anywhere between 1 and 2, it's going to be equal to the slope of that line. And you can see that one is minus 10 over 1. So it would be like this, minus 10 i hat centimeters per second. And finally, we can't do the instantaneous velocity for the entire interval because that's the whole point, is you don't get it for a big interval, you get it at certain points in time. So that's really the only two instantaneous velocities in this problem, 40 and minus 10. And then let's see, the final one is the instantaneous speed. Right, so we'll call this box 4, and the instantaneous speed would just be the v without the average, so it's instantaneous, and without the vector, because speeds are never vectors. Let's think about what that is for a minute. So speed relied on distance, and distance was the total path it goes. doesn't really care if it went forward or backwards within some uh, uh, during the interval. It just counts how far it goes. But if we've now shrunk the interval down to a teeny point, it would seem that it becomes kind of the same thing as velocity. If you shrink down to a point, whatever your displacement is, is going to be the same as your distance. There's no time to go forwards and backwards within a teeny interval. So it is actually true. Velocity, really, or I'm sorry, the, the instantaneous speed just becomes the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity. To get it mathematically, all you got to do is chop off the negative sign. It's really just how big is, is the vector. There's no big differences showing up like this because the intervals are so small. So then we could say the answers for box four are that the, um, uh, the instantaneous speed is 0.5. If it was 40 i hat centimeters per second, it's just 40 centimeters per second. And if it was uh, 1.2, if it was negative 10 i hat centimeters per second, it's just 10 centimeters per second. It's the magnitude of the vector. 
So that's the four quantities. That's how you calculate them. And that's kind of how you think about it.